At this time, I'm going to go over all the ritual rites of the Passover, which is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Same thing. We're going to start in the book of Leviticus, chapter uh, 23. And I'm going to give some understanding on the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, Satan, which is the enemy and the adversary of the Almighty God, um, is full of confusion and chaos and has all kind of lies, and he's a liar, okay? And the father of lies, as uh, was said by our Lord and Savior, our King, uh, Jesus Christ. So he's, he's also lying about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And some of these lies um, of the world, which do not have the spirit of truth, will try to make its way into the congregation of the righteous. Do everybody understand that? Um, and you're supposed, to be, you're supposed to know how to identify um, a lie. Um, how do you identify a lie? If it's not something that's being taught in the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ, and it's against anything that's being taught in the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ, it's a lie. That's how you identify it. The scripture says to the law and to the testimony, which is the Israelites who was given the law and the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because they don't have, they are not enlightened. The word means, the word says they are not, there is no light in them, which means they are not enlightened by God. They're not informed. Um, they're not given a higher level of knowledge. Some people think the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread are two different events. Okay. That happens at two different times. Um, again, it's the same event. Okay. So I'm, this is what I'm going to be going into along with some uh, other understanding. We're in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 4. Uh, read that please. These are the feasts of the Lord. Okay. All the feasts of the Lord, the majority of them during the time that this was being given to the nation of Israel by Moses um, are listed in Leviticus chapter 23. Anything that happened after Moses, um, Moses' time is listed in other uh, areas of the Bible like Purim, um, Hanukkah. Okay, those are listed in other areas, but most of the feasts, uh, the commemorations, the memorials of things that the Lord have done for the nation of Israel, not just anything but miraculous things, that the Lord have done for the nation of Israel. They all in, uh, the majority of them are in Leviticus chapter 23. Read it one more time. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations. They are all holy convocations. Okay, so Moses is giving this to the nation of Israel after these words here in Leviticus 23, after they have already been uh, delivered and made an exodus out of ancient Egypt. Okay, we can go to Exodus chapter 12 where Moses was given the children of Israel the instructions on what needed to be done while they were still in Egypt. But Leviticus chapter 23 is talking about after they have left Egypt, they didn't get into the land yet, but they already uh, delivered from ancient Egypt. Read on. But you shall proclaim in their season. So these are things that have to be announced. These high holy days, these miraculous, the memorial of these miraculous events have to be announced when the season of them is coming, like you see being done in the Israelite church of God and Jesus Christ. Every time one of these high holy days is coming up, then you will hear an announcement being made because this is the order of the almighty God. Read on. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. The 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Okay, read on. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread. Unto the Lord. Read on. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Okay, so again, this is where Satan tried to bring in the confusion. The 14th day and then the 15th day. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. The 15th day for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The 14th day for uh, Passover, which would give you eight days rather than seven days. Which will, again, throw off the actual date of when you're supposed to be uh, celebrating the High Holy Day. Because the Lord gave the date. And the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Now, Passover also starts the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Do everybody understand that? All right, All right let's go. Uh, Moses clearly stated um, how this is supposed to be worship, 
how it's supposed to be celebrated, all the ritual rites of it, and how it's supposed to be followed. Let's get the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16. As the people of God, as Israelites, you're supposed to know everything there is to know about your history. As the people of God, you're supposed to know everything there is to know about the law because you are required to keep it. As the people of God, you're supposed to know everything there is to know about God so you cannot be misled or deceived by Satan. Deuteronomy chapter 16, we're going to start at verse 1. Read. Observe the month of Abib. Observe the month of Abib. The month of Abib was the name that was given to the month that the Israelites were being liberated, being freed from Egypt in. Okay, that month was called a month of Abib. It fell in the springtime. And the word Abib was named after the season. That month, which was called Abib, was named after the season that the high holy day fell in, which was when everything was coming back to life, when leaves was coming back on trees and flowers was beginning to bloom again. Do everybody understand that? Uh. The word Abib means to spring forth. Everybody understand that? Uh. It represented a new beginning from death to life. Again, God is in order. Everything that he does has an order to it. Do everybody understand that? Uh. The Israelites in captivity... Living as a slave is not life. Do everybody understand that? Um, the scripture says in the book of Revelations, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Talking about America. Why is it referring them to dead bodies? Because the knowledge, the life of God, the spirit of God is no longer or was no longer with the nation of Israel. And they were living as slaves. And to be a slave is not life. That's not a way to live. That's, that's death. Observe the month of Bib. Read that one more time, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. Observe the month of Abib. That means when this season comes around, when this month comes around, you're supposed to be preparing yourself for the high holy days. You're supposed to be getting ready for the high holy days. You're supposed to make sure that your family, your husband, your wife, your children, everybody is prepared to deal with the Lord's Passover, which is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Read on. And keep the Passover. And do what? Keep the Passover. And do what? Keep the Passover. Read on. Unto the Lord thy God. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. Do everybody understand that? Uh, Read on. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of the Egypt by night. Okay, so in this month, whenever the month of, uh, uh, whenever Passover is coming around, that 14th day of the first month, this is when, this is that time where the Lord had created a great miracle and brought forth a great miracle on the planet earth which was the deliverance of the nation of Israel from the Egyptians read on thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God Come on. of the flock and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose and to place his name there okay so sacrifice the Passover is talking about the lamb that was going to be chosen to be the Passover lamb um the most important thing in this verse here, um, or that's going to stand out among what I'm going through tonight, is it says, in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. So after they got out of Egypt, okay, in Egypt it is clear. When you go through Exodus chapter 12, that everybody was in their individual houses waiting for Christ to pass over their houses and enter into the houses of the Egyptians to slay the Egyptians. This is why this event is called Passover. That's clear. But once they left the nation of, once they left the, uh, the Egyptians, the nation of uh, Egypt, um, it was no longer going to be kept like that in the future where everybody was in their individual houses. But what the Lord was going to provide, he was going to provide a place to put his name there. Generally, that would be a temple that the Lord our God would have erected for the Israelites to be able to come to and worship. So this is what Moses is detailing to them. He's giving them information about how this is going to be celebrated in the future. It's not going to be like when you were in Egypt and when you were slaves, when you were in your own houses and you didn't come out your house. For this Passover, as you come into the land, you're going to have to go to the place. You're going to have to leave your house and you're going to have to go to the place which God shall choose. This again is showing you just one of the many reasons 
uh, to show you that the so-called Jew, the white man that's called himself a Jew, has no knowledge whatsoever about the history of the nation of Israel. They still in their houses, they call it a seat as if they in Egypt, okay, waiting for somebody to pass over their houses, okay. Moses clearly stated in verse um, 2, the, in the place, in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. What is that? That's the temple that God has chosen. Read on. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Okay, so now all of this is symbolic. We're going to be getting through that as we continue through this holy lesson. That eating unleavened bread um, or bread without leaven in it was actually representation. It was a metaphor. It was symbolic. So even though the Lord was taking them through this physically, and they physically had to uh, eat unleavened bread. That's bread without leavening agents. Agents, when you're baking things to make things rise. Yeast is the most popular of them all. Do everybody understand that? Um, they couldn't put that in any of their baking, anything that they were uh, baking, any bread that they were baking. Do everybody understand that? Nothing to make the bread rise. Again, they had to leave Egypt in haste. It could have been any, at any moment. Um, so they had to prepare this feast, this Passover feast. So they, couldn't have, they didn't have the time to be waiting for the bread to rise. Read on. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread. This seven days begin at the Passover. That's when it began, at the Passover. Read on. Therewith, even the bread of affliction... For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste. Read on. That thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. So all throughout history, what you're going to find out is this. This was representation of something. Okay, it started off with the representation of the affliction that our people endured in Egypt. And it was supposed to remind us, and it's still to this day, it's supposed to remind us of the affliction that our people went through in Egypt. When they looked at them unleavened cakes, they looked at it because we was getting ready to be delivered from the land of affliction. Read on. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast. Okay, so now remember that as this leaven, as we are in the feast of unleavened bread, remember the instructions that the Lord has given on this leavened bread or unleavened bread as it will take on other symbolic meanings as we travel throughout history. Do everybody understand that? So what he said again, read it one more time. Tell him what verse you in. Verse 4. Read. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days. Yeah, throughout the whole land of Israel, there couldn't be one loaf of bread that had leaven in it. Throughout the whole land. Could not be seen. It had to be removed and be nowhere within any house of any Israelite throughout the land of Israel. Read on. Neither shall there anything... Of the flesh, which thou sacrifices the first day at even. Which is the Passover lamb. None of that Passover lamb. Read on. Remain all night until the morning. It can remain all night until the morning. So the, again, why is the Lord giving all these strict instructions? Because throughout history, this is going to take on a different symbolic. It's going to take on another symbolic meaning. Do everybody understand that? So the Lord don't want you dealing with this like you deal with a regular meal. Okay, everybody understand that? You cannot have leftovers. Of the Passover lamb. You can't make a lamb stew out of it. You can't, you can't go and do things with this Passover lamb because this Passover lamb is holy. It is symbolic. It is representing the Lord passing over the Israelites and going into the house of the Egyptians to kill their firstborn and free us from captivity. It will also take on other symbolic meanings throughout history. So this is not to be looked at as food. And to be dealt with like, okay, well, you know, I want to save some of this and I want to make a sandwich of it or out of it for the next day. Nothing could remain until the morning. If whatever you didn't eat, you had to take it, you had to burn. If you felt like a lamb when you were in Egypt was going to be too big, let's say you had a small family, which is you, your wife, and one child, then you were able to share that Passover lamb with another family so nothing of it can remain until the morning. If you found nobody to share it with, then it had to be burned. Whatever was left over had to be burned. Do everybody understand that? It was specifically for Passover. Everybody got that? Read on. Verse 5. 
Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates. So this is where Moses is given an order that this is not going to be like the way you celebrated it in Egypt. You are not to kill the Passover lamb within any of thy gates. In Egypt, they took the Passover lamb in, in their area where they live and they sacrificed it right there. Moses is saying, when the, when the Lord provides that place that he's going to choose, you can no longer do it in your households. This is what he's saying here. Read it one more time. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates. Read on. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Read on. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. But you shall sacrifice the Passover lamb at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Now is this clear? Is this crystal clear? Uh. That you're not supposed to be in your house talking about you celebrating Passover? Is it clear? 